Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we are going to be learning about types of construction as regulated by the building code. Uh, this should be a pretty quick um, lesson this morning, but it's a very important topic. <clears throat> so thank you for uh, being here to, to learn about this uh, with us. So construction types, what are they? The construction type of a building establishes the types of material allowed to be used for any given building. This is primarily focused on performance during a fire, whether or not the material is combustible, how heat and or fire affects the material, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it also includes things like fireproofing, uh, whether or not uh, these building elements are required to be fireproofed or if they are not required to be fireproofed, but um, think about these different types of materials and how they uh, typically relate or how they respond to a fire. So for example, wood construction obviously is, is more susceptible to fire damage uh, and danger than a steel building or a concrete building. Uh, but these materials, the way that they are used, those, those um, are governed by, by the construction type of the building. So why does it matter? Uh, we'll take a look at what the 2018 IBC, International Building Code and Commentary states. Um, chapter six is, is uh, called Types of Construction. And uh, this is what it says. It says chapter six contains the requirements to classify buildings into one of five types of construction. Tables 601 and 602 provide the minimum hourly fire resistance ratings for the structural elements based on the type of construction of the building and fire separation distance. Section 602 describes each construction type in detail. Section 603 describes the permitted use of combustible materials in buildings of non-combustible construction. So it regulates um, the required fire resistance rate ratings and combustibility limitations on building elements. Now, why is this an important topic? the commentary provides uh, the following uh, insight. Quote, correct classification of a building by its type of construction is essential. Many code requirements applicable to a building, such as allowable height, number of stories, and area are dependent on its type of construction. If a building is placed in an incorrect construction classification, for example, one that is a higher category than required, its owner may be penalized by increased construction costs. On the other hand, when a building is incorrectly classified into a lower type of construction, it will not be constructed in a manner that takes into account the relative risks associated with its size or function. The provisions of this chapter, coupled with chapters three and five and tables 601 and 602, establish the basis for the equivalent risk theory on which the entire code is based. So obviously this is a very important uh, thing to get right. You really wanna make sure that your construction type is, is correct, is correctly classified. Um, the commentary gave kind of two examples about what happens if you get it wrong. Um, on one end, if it's a higher construction type, then yeah, it's gonna be more expensive because then you're gonna be uh, building out of more expensive materials potentially. Uh, or fireproofing buildings that don't necessarily need to be fireproofed because of their, uh, their risk uh, classification. But more concerning is, is when you get it wrong on, on the, other, the other spectrum, meaning you actually incorrectly classify as a lower type of construction. Those buildings then are going to be subject to potentially being oversized, uh, too big, too tall, without uh, sufficient protection of, of, of the building's uh, elements. And so obviously that, that would be a very big problem if, if you have a building that is um, oversized and not fireproofed or not constructed of non-combustible materials. So there are five primary types of construction, types one through five, and we're gonna very quickly go over the differences between them. So types one and two are non-combustible construction. Per the code, Types one and two construction are those types of construction in which the building elements listed in table 601 are of non-combustible materials. 
except as permitted in section 603 and elsewhere in the code. So those building elements listed in table 601, uh, we will get to that in a little bit, but th those are the primary building elements, right? That's gonna be like the structural frame of the building, the exterior walls of the building, the roof of the building, the floor systems of the building, all of those primary building elements are required to be non-combustible. Now, as permitted by section 603, in buildings of type one and two construction, there are some uh, materials that can be combustible. Think things like uh, like finished flooring or something, like, like a hardwood floor. Like you could do hardwood floor in a type one and type two building, even though hardwood flooring would be considered a combustible material, it's not one of the primary building elements um, that requires the non-combustibility. And so all of these are listed in section 603. It's a, it's a fairly long list, um, but th those would be uh, the, ex the exceptions to the non-combustibility requirements uh, required for type one and two construction. So type three construction, this, this is colloquially referred to as ordinary construction, although nowadays this really is, is not, uh, it's not really ordinary anymore, even though uh, the term still kind of sticks in the industry. But type three construction per code is that type of construction in which the exterior walls are of non-combustible materials and the interior building elements are of any material permitted by code. So it's kind of a hybrid non-combustible with some allowable combustible construction. And uh, the reason that type three is, is called ordinary construction is because for a long time, uh, post-World War II through uh, much of the 20th century, uh, ordinary construction was block walls. So CMU, uh, concrete masonry unit, cinder blocks, walls, and then they would just do the floors and roofs um, and interior construction out of wood, uh, you know, wood framing to span those distances. But this was a very common type of construction uh, back then, and it is, it is, uh, type three, while not as commonly used nowadays, it is still a viable construction type. And um, every now and then we'll come across a building where type three is the appropriate uh, type of construction. So type three, kind of, kind of again, a hybrid, uh, non-combustible exterior walls and uh, interior components can be combustible. Type four is heavy timber construction. Now, um, I would like to note that type four construction has been overhauled in the new 2021 codes um, that were just published. And in the 2021 edition of the International Building Code, type four construction is, is both heavy timber and mass timber. So they've kind of expanded type four construction in the 2021 codes, but as it exists in the 2018 and earlier editions, Type four construction is heavy timber. And per code, type four construction is that type of construction in which the exterior walls are of non-combustible materials and the interior building elements are of solid wood, laminated wood, heavy timber, or structural composite lumber without concealed spaces. So heavy timber, again, uh, this type, this construction type, type four, um, similar to type three has exterior walls of non-combustible materials, but then the interior um, is all solid, solid wood, heavy timber, big, big members of wood. And um, this, this is uh, in contrast to like the non-combustible materials like steel and concrete, which, which are not uh, combustible. Heavy timber is considered a combustible product because it is made of wood and, and wood does burn. Um, but type four, regulates it uh, differently, uniquely, because of the unique characteristics that heavy timber construction does have uh, in fire conditions. So the last construction type is type five, any materials allowed. Per code, type five construction is that type of construction in which the structural elements, exterior walls, and interior walls are of any materials permitted by code. So generally, Type five construction is, is, is generally understood to be stick frame or wood frame buildings, wood, wood exterior walls, wood stud exterior walls, interior walls, wood floors, wood roofs, et cetera. However, 
technically type five just says any materials permitted by code. So, so you could do a building of concrete or steel and call it type five if the uh, if, if the factors of your project make it so that a type five classification would be beneficial, even if you're planning to do it out of non combustible materials. So technically, you could do a type five building out of concrete or steel um, if you wanted. But more often than not, a type five building is going to be uh, just wood. It's going to be a wood a wood building, not heavy timber uh, like type four is. But this would be like two by dimensional lumber and things like that. So what are these building elements regulated by the construction type, right, as we've been talking about? Well, here's table 601. This is the fire resistance rating requirements for building elements. Um, and these are, the hour, these are the required hourly ratings for uh, these building elements. So what you'll see is that uh, higher construction types, that would be like type one and two, uh, are gonna be a bit more restrictive in what is required versus what you have at the other end of the spectrum, uh, like going all the way down to type 5B. So if you, look at, if you look at type 5B construction, you'll see that all of the required ratings are zero. So there is, no, there is no requirement to rate the primary structural frame, the bearing walls, the roofs, the floors in a type 5B building. So type 5B, Remember type five is, is any material allowed per code generally gonna be a wood building. So type five B is basically an unprotected stick frame or an unprotected wood framed building. Um, you, you can see that, that that's gonna be the most uh, susceptible to fire, right? Because it's unprotected and it's made of wood versus all the way at the opposite end, we have a type one A and a type one A building first and foremost is non-combustible um, as, as regulated uh, by the construction types uh, rules. So type one would be, type one A would be a non-combustible building that is still fireproofed for three hours of fire resistance for the structural frame, three hours of fire resistance for the bearing walls, et cetera, et cetera. So with, with that context, you can understand why a building of type one A construction would be allowed to be so much bigger than a building of type 5B construction, right? So like on, on one end of the spectrum, you have unprotected wood frame, which is very susceptible, highly susceptible to fire damage versus at the other end of the spectrum, type 1A, where you have three hour fireproofed buildings of non-combustible concrete and steel, right? So those, those are gonna perform much better under fire conditions. So, Taking a look at uh, the way that this is regulated for heights and areas, um, here's an example from Table 506.2, uh, specifically detailing how how uh, how large in area these buildings are allowed to be based on construction type. So, how large in area and height a building is allowed to be is also contingent on the construction type. Buildings constructed with safer materials are allowed to be larger in area and height while less safe materials will result in buildings of more limited size. So in this particular case, again, let's look at type 5B, which is the, the uh, uh, least restrictive construction type. And just for the purposes of this exercise, we're gonna look at the very first occupancy classification, A1, uh, A meaning an assembly type occupancy. So the very, very top assembly A1 group for a type 5B construction type, um, for a non-sprinkler building, that's the NS, you can see that we would be limited to 5,500 square feet. So a, a, a building of type 5B, you could only build it 5,500 square feet. That's as big as you could do uh, under that provision. Whereas you can see if you go all the way up to type 1A, UL, that means unlimited. So in that case, the building is, is considered sufficiently safe that it can be unlimited in area. So you can basically build as big as you'd like, as long as you satisfy all the other relevant code requirements. But, but that, that kind of illustrates the, the nature of it, right? That the, the more safe the building is gonna be constructed out of, um, the, the, the bigger it can be. The less safe uh, the building materials are, the smaller the building uh, will be. So 
When it comes to types of construction, it is very important that you correctly classify your building to the correct construction type. If you are the architect for any given job, it is your responsibility to assign the correct construction type to the building. Many other important design factors will depend on correct classification. For example, the structural engineers, they need to know what types of material to use, wood frame, steel, concrete, et cetera. And if the construction type is not properly assigned, major mistakes can follow. So again, as the architect, this is your responsibility. You really wanna make sure you get this correct. And not only do you get it correct, but that you, you inform all of your consultant engineers um, on, on those requirements to the degree that they uh, are, are necessary for the engineers to, uh, to understand. Um, so with that, that will conclude our lesson today on types of construction. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time.